All right, guys, so welcome back to another video in this series. Uh, today we're going to be covering curves. And actually, it's not quite as complex as uh, you might think. Curves are treated just like bones whenever you're performing additives. That's basically uh, <laughs> the short version of it. But if you want to stick around, I'll go ahead and share this with you because this was confusing because at first i did not expect curves to be treated just like bones but they actually are and so you'll see right here in this example i'm using a modify curve uh, and this is the base so i'm setting the curve value to one and here i'm setting the curve value to nine it doesn't matter what kind of additive it is. Uh, they're all treated the same. So I'll go ahead and explain to you why this is. And basically right here and right here explains the two different uh, types. I've went over this before with additives. Uh, so when you apply an additive, the additive uh, output pose, this output pose right here that's plugging into here, uh, it gets added to the base, and uh, that's your output. So that applies to curves as well, which I did not expect. I thought curves would be treated independently, but they're treated just the same, which in the context of things, that actually makes sense. So the curve value is currently 1.0, and so I'm adding 9 to it. So 9 plus 1 equals 10. Over here on this one, I'm using a dynamic additive just to show you that it acts the same way. If I would have uh, set this up from inside of uh, the animation itself, like I did right here on this one, if I would have done the same thing to this one, the output would have been the same. And that's because uh, setting it up, setting up additives inside of here, they're calculated exactly as they are in runtime with the make dynamic additive. And if you move your cursor over it, you'll see the additive pose uh, minus the base pose is the pose that you're gonna get. So the base pose is subtracted from the additive pose, which means that whatever curve value is on, on this base pose, that's going to be subtracted from whatever is on this curve pose. And so right here in this curve pose, we have a value of four. And on this one, we have a value of 1. And 4 minus 1 equals 3. That's why we're getting 3. And since this has no uh, value for that curve uh, pose, that curve pose is not being set inside of this animation. So if I open it up, you'll see it has no curves. So the example curve default value would be 0. So 0 plus three, it's coming out of here, zero plus three is three. And that's the reason why you get the, that output of three. Over here on this one, this is a uh, a catchy one because I've seen, po I've seen a post in the forum because I was searching for information on this. And somebody said uh, that they thought that uh, if you set up an animation uh, with the base post type, frame from this animation, uh, the guy was French. He thought that if you did that, that these curve values just weren't evaluated. Well, that's not actually true uh, because the same thing is happening right here. So, so you can uh, think of it this way. The base pose type is this animation. It would just be like, it would, it would be exactly like doing this. So if I went to selected animation frame and I came back over here and I set, I set this animation as the base pose and I selected this first frame right here, frame zero, that would be the exact same thing as doing this. So it's still being evaluated and the base pose is still being subtracted from that pose. So since since they both have the same curve, 
And in, ca in both cases, the value is six. Uh, the six minus six equals zero. And again, right here, since there is no value for that curve, the value is zero, or I mean, there is no curve on that uh, animation and it's not being modified, the value will default to zero. And so uh, zero plus zero equals zero. That's basically it, guys. Uh, I mean, it's, it's pretty simple, but I actually found it really confusing. And for the longest time, I didn't know why uh, that was happening in ALS, uh, because in ALS, uh, on his transition L and transition R animations, they're additive animations. And in fact, I can go ahead and show you guys here real quick. Because I was investigating the foot locking and I came across that and I was just thrown off. And it's not the first time I've looked at that and tried to figure out uh, what was going on and just couldn't figure it out. But this time, thankfully, I was able to figure it out. So if we come over here to our transitions, you'll see this ALS in transition L. He has negative values right here. And so right here, you'll see this is a negative one. And this is, uh, well, that's actually negative one, but this is zero. So when it ends this, when it goes past this, it's all this obviously zero. But yeah, so the reason why he's doing that inside of here, uh, guys, is basically the same thing. He's applying this um, additively over the top of it. And on his anim graph, you'll see in several places where he's actually setting the foot IK to one. Uh, and, and even when he's not moving, if he's not moving, he's always modifying the curve and setting it to one. So whenever he applies the additive over the top of it, uh, he needs it to be negative one. So that one uh, plus a negative one equals zero. And that's the reason why he had those values negative. All right, guys, that's pretty much it. Uh, if you found this video helpful, uh, make sure to like down below and consider subscribing. And uh, you can always give out a super thanks if you want. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next video.